Hello, in this tutorial we will look at uh, question number three of uh, December 2010 paper which examines linear programming. In question three, cosmetic company is producing variety of uh, creams and lotions. Before reading further, let's uh, check the requirements and they are at the end of the question. There are two parts and in part A on the graph paper provided, you use linear programming, so the topic is linear programming. Calculate the optimum number of each product that the cosmetic cost should make per week, so the products are creams and lotions, assuming that it wishes to maximize contribution. What we are given here is the objective function. We need to maximize contribution. Objective function is here. Now, question continues here. Calculate the total contribution per week for the new production plans. So there are two requirements. We need to calculate total contribution and also optimum number of each product. All workings must be rounded to two decimal places. In part B, calculate the shadow price, shadow price and slack. Uh, all workings must be rounded to two decimal places. When solving linear programming problem, you have to follow these seven steps. As you will read details of the question, please focus on the first three steps. A definition of variables, objective function and constraint. As stated in the requirement part A, objective function is maximize contribution. So the total contribution is going to be our objective function. Now the total contribution is going to depend on the unit contribution and on the number of uh, units of each product produced. The number of uh, units of each product produced is going to be the variables. Now, as we read through the details of the question, we need to identify information necessary for objective function, which is unit contributions, and any other information necessary for identification of uh, constraints. So let's continue reading the question details. So cosmetic creams and lotions, those will be my variables. The creams and lotions are sold uh, at a price of 23.20 and 16.80. That could be information needed for calculation of my unit contribution. If I subtract the unit costs, I have unit contribution. Uh, we need some ingredients, uh, many of them. Well, what is really important here when you read, you need to seek for the absolute figures which will give you some limitation of your business. And I can see some figures in the paragraph number two. Due to the redundancies made earlier in the year, supply of skilled labor is now limited up to 160 hours or 9600 minutes. So this is going to be one of my constraints and I will highlight it in red. Skilled labor. And depending which one is more useful, I will then decide whether I'm going to use hours or minutes. Now read through the rest of the document and identify all the remaining constraints. There are three more constraints in the text and the first one is uh, related to grams of silk powder which is limited to uh, 5000 and next one is 1600 grams of amino acids and the last constraint is below the cost card and it talks about maximum demand for lotions, which is 2000 bottles. Information in the cost card could be used to calculate the unit uh, contribution. However, as I can see, unit contribution is given. It's nine dollars per unit of uh, cream and eight for lotions. So we don't need to calculate that. In addition, we have some information about fixed costs, which is really irrelevant information because that has no impact on your contribution. In your answer sheet, identify the question and question part. And let's summarize uh, our information. Uh, let's define the problem first. So we know there is going to be some variables. 
there is going to be objective function and there are going to be some constraints. Let's start with variables. As you remember, there are two variables, which is quantity of creams and lotions. So uh, let's call them C and L. Next is objective function, which has to be maximize contribution. which depends on the quantity of creams and each of them earns nine dollars of contribution and quantity of lotions which earns eight dollars per unit and the next step is definition of constraints there were all together four constraints the first one was skilled labor The next one was on powder. Next one was silk acid. And the last one was related to uh, lotion demand. Skilled labor is limited to 160 hours or 9600 minutes. Now, how much we will need for production depends on the quantity of creams and lotions. And not just that, it also depends on uh, how much is needed uh, for production of one cream of uh, skilled labor. Skilled labor is here and we need four minutes. Oh, that tells me that uh, I should use as a limiting number 9600 minutes. So let's summarize that in our answer sheet here, we know that the skilled labor is limited to 9600 minutes. And what I need is uh, four minutes to produce C and five minutes to produce one unit of L. And this has to be lower than is available. Now try to summarize uh, all the remaining constraints. So the constraints for powder and acid are as uh, follows. Uh, the remaining uh, constraint is uh, related to lotion demand and there is just number of units uh, should be lower than 2000. Don't forget also non-negativity constraints because you are not going to produce uh, negative numbers of uh, creams and lotions. Up to here we have defined the problem. The next step is uh, drawing the graph. We need to draw a graph on a graph paper provided. And we start with the origin which will be in the left bottom corner. And then we draw the two axes. Bring the ruler to the exam so that you produce professional looking uh, graph. And uh, we need to decide which axis is going to represent which variable. So I will put here C for creams and L for lotions. Next we need to put the constraints on the graph. So let's start with the skilled labor. And we need to draw this uh, and it is a line basically and uh, for drawing a line we need two points and the most easiest thing to do is uh, to find out the intercepts so if c equals zero how much would need to be l for that uh, l would have to equal 9600 divided by uh, uh, five and that equals 1920 So we have calculated intercept with uh, C axis. In the similar way we can calculate intercept uh, with L axis. That means if L equals 0, how much is C? Well, it's going to be 9600 divided by 4, which gives you 2400. And you can calculate in a similar way intercept uh, with uh, two axes uh, for the remaining constraints. So try to do it for powder and acid. So for each constraint, 
which is basically a linear line, if there was an equal here, we have calculated two coordinates, two points, which will allow us uh, to draw a line. And now we need to go to the graph and uh, put these points on the graph. Uh, for that we need to put uh, a measure on the graph. Uh, so we need to see what are the maximum values. Uh, and I can see that C, maximum C is 2400, maximum L is uh, 3200. So on my graph each square is going to represent 100 and I will put uh, here will be 1000, 2000, 3000, 1000, 2000, 3000 and I need to put uh, the first intercept with C is going to be at 2400 and uh, intercept with L axis is going to be at 1920 and I will try to connect these two points, uh, try to do it as exact as possible, almost like me. Now in the similar way we can uh, put the line for powder and we need to put these two coordinates on the graph. So let's uh, see 1666 should be the C intercept and 2500 intercept with L. Uh, let's connect these two points and we have a line and this is for powder. The next line is for acid and uh, the point should be, the intercept should be 3200 which is however above the limit of my graph so uh, a good trick would be to recalculate the point. Uh, we need two points uh, and uh, it doesn't have to be intercept, so uh, it could be for any other value of C. So let's put something uh, reasonably here, let's say 1000. If C is 1000, L is going to be uh, 1600 less, 1000 is 600 uh, divided by 0 0.5, that's going to be 1200. I will put the points on the graph. So uh, intercept with uh, C is 1600, then we have this new point which is at 1000 of C and uh, L is 1200 and let's connect these two points and we have a line which uh, represents acid. The last thing that we need to do is uh, draw the graph, uh, the line for demand for lotions. Now it is limited to 2000, so it is a parallel line with C axis. Demand should be lower than 2000, so it's all these points below this line. Same can be said about acid, which should be below the green line. Uh, same for powder, below the orange line. And same for labor, below the red line. And uh, what we know about creams and lotions is that we are going to produce positive amounts. So they will be in this feasible area. So feasible area is this shaded rectangle. Let's put some uh, letters for the intercepts here. That's how we define it. Uh, and within this rectangle, we will find our optimum solution for our creams and uh, lotion quantities. We can determine the optimum point by drawing the objective function into the graph. So let's uh, see, objective function is 9c plus 8l. It doesn't equal anything, but we can set it to equal to any figure which we like. And here I would suggest uh, let's put 10,000. Now we can find out two coordinates, uh, which would be uh, if c equals 0, l is going to be 1,250. If uh, 
L is equal zero, uh, C is going to be 1101. Let's put these uh, two points on the graph and uh, connect them. So here is 1101, 1250, and let's connect the two points. The black line represents the contribution equal 10,000 for different uh, quantities of CNL. Uh, this is uh, likely not uh, the optimum solution because uh, there are points above that line. So uh, we could try to find some other uh, higher value of uh, contribution. And let's say uh, if you calculate uh, contribution equal 17,000, you will get uh, new points. So uh, uh, 17,000 uh, divided by uh, uh, divided by 9, you get uh, 1808. That is going to be intercept with C. And uh, 17,000 divided by 8, you get uh, 2125. If you connect the two points, uh, you get a line which shows uh, contribution 17,000. Now, this is still below point B. Uh, but you could see that uh, point A and C are below this line. So, uh, optimum solution is going to be in our point B. That is the optimum solution. So, how do we find the point B? Well, it is intercept of this orange line, uh, which is a constraint for powder, and this red line, which is a constraint for labor. If we go back to our constraints definition, we can find the point by looking at this uh, two constraints and uh, solving uh, two equations uh, with two unknowns. So we need to copy these two and make them as equations. 4c plus 5l equals 9600 and 3c plus 2l equals 5000. If we multiply the first equation by 3, we get 12c plus 15l, which equals uh, 28,800. And if we multiply second by 4, we get 12c plus 8l equals 20,000. Now, if we subtract the second equation from the first equation, what we get is 7L equals 8,800. And therefore, L equals 1,257 point 14. And if we substitute to the first uh, equation, we get C equals 828.58. Now we have calculated the optimum quantity. If we substitute uh, these quantities into uh, our objective function, which is uh, 9C plus 8L, what we get is uh, the optimum contribution, which comes to 17,514.34.